Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to register a command using .NET API. For example, I'm going to show you how to create an action and then call that action or execute it in a plugin and with a Python script. So are you ready? All right, let's get started. So the same setup as before. Let's go ahead and open Visual Studio. So go to my Windows toolbar, type in Visual Studio. I'll then run it as an administrator. And then we want to start a new project. So go to my start page and click new project. And it's going to be a class library. Notice I'm using .NET Framework 4.5 and the language is Visual C Sharp. And let's go ahead and rename our class library to be example 002. And then Visual Studio will create the project for me, which you can see here in the Solution Explorer pane. Now we need to add the references for our command. So right click references, click add reference. And in the Reference Manager, add those three libraries from your program files of your Visual Components 3D product. So Caliber Micro, Create 3D Shared, UX.Shared, and we need that assembly from the .NET Framework called System Component Model Composition. So I'll select this checkbox here. Click OK. Let's now add using statements for those references. So I'll go to my code here in the code view. So we're using System.ComponentModel.Composition using Caliber Micro, then the ones from the Visual Components API, so Visual Components, Create 3D, and Visual Components .ux .shared. Now in order for you to create a command you have to implement it as an action item. And this is referring to system.action which you can find more about in the MSDN network. So for any class you have, just have it derived from action item. And we're going to use the constructor of this class to implement the constructor for our command here. So if I actually highlight this error message you can see it does not contain a constructor. So we're going to use the base constructor, so I'll type public class1 and then put the parentheses like this and to use the base constructor I'll use a colon, use a keyword base and notice we can give it an ID you can have an ID, a text ID, an icon name, and you have other options as well. But let's just keep it simple like assigning this action an ID so we can then call it in our plugin and with a Python script. So I usually like to have a suffix of command for my IDs. So we're going to have create a very simple command first. So it's going to be hello command. It's just going to print hello world in the output panel. And then add the curly brackets. And that's it. <laughs> Not quite. You still need to execute, uh, define what happens when you execute this action. So we're going to use public override. And it's this method here we're going to override. So it's called execute. And get rid of that. And as I showed you in part uh, one of the video, uh, for implementing a simple plugin, we're going to use that iMessage service to print a message to the output panel. So let's get a handle for that first. So. The type is iMessage service, my variable will be ms equals, and I'm going to use the IOC to get a handle for that instance of an object that for, is of type iMessage service. And then we're going to use that handle we have to append a message. And the message we want to print is hello world, but you can say, to make it different in case you still have that old plugin, hello from my command. And then give it a message level of just a warning. And now we have that very basic action item. But in order for the MEF to discover and know that this uh, action we created can be used elsewhere, we need to export our class. So we're going to add an export attribute. So square brackets, export, parentheses, and we'll use that type of constructor to define the type we're making. And that's going to be an I action item. Alright, so we have a very basic command set up now, which is just an action, and we can see that we inherited from action item this class, and we used its constructor, and gave our class an ID. We then defined how this action, uh, what it does when it's executed, so it actually gets a handle for the message service, and then prints a message to the output panel. So let's now test this in a plugin, but I first want to comment my code. So let's just add a comment here saying this is my action or 
you'll sometimes uh, see things referred to as a net command. But a net command can mean many things. It can be an action. It can be other things as well. But now we're going to create another class that will be a simple plugin. So we'll do public and class. And what do we want to call it? Let's just call it my plugin. And there's our class. So we'll add those curly brackets. And now what does our class need to do? Well, we know it needs to inherit from i plugin. So let me fix this up here. And then have the class inherit from i plugin. Then we need to implement i plugin. So point at the light bulb and implement the interface explicitly. So when it exits, we don't need to worry about that, so I'll get rid of that. And when the command, I'm sorry, when the plugin initializes, we want to call that action we created. And here's the, the main focus of this whole video, is whenever you're creating your own commands and you want them to be registered to the application, they're actually contained in what's called a command registry. And I'm going to show you how to get a handle for that now, which we'll then use to call the action we just made. So the type is I command registry let's call that CR and once again we're going to use the IOC to get a handle for it so IOC get type I command registry and now I have the handle for the command registry so notice I have I can get that list of actions and other things as well but now I'm going to use this method called execute action so let's now add the parentheses there and now we need to redefine what action we want to call and by ID and the ID for our action is hello command. And now we need to export our plugin. So it's discovered. So we'll add that export attribute. Parentheses, use the constructor for type of, and we're exporting it as a type of I plugin. Now before they build this, you probably want to rename the class for your action. So I'll do that now. I'll go to the Solution Explorer task pane, right click, click rename, and let's just rename it my hello action and then Visual Studio will take care of the rest for me and now let's go ahead and define the properties of our project and then do the build and test with the software so I will actually I'm gonna add a command here real quick I'm sorry a comment so this is my plugin calling my action and now let's go to the project menu here and then access the properties of the project so example 002 and same as before, you could add that ux.prefix, so your assembly for this project is discovered and loaded. But uh, one thing I forgot to mention in the previous video is you actually can use ux or you can use plugin dot. So this prefix here can also be used to you know register your plugins and have them work with the software. And this is sometimes preferred, so it's a bit more clear about you know what this assembly or this library is in the program file. So you can either use plugin or ux dot. Uh, then followed by your assembly name. So I'm just going to use the plugin dot and then my assembly name here. And then I'll go to my build. And our platform target is a 64 bit. And we're going to build our assembly in the program files of our 3D project. So let's go to Visual Components. And I'm using Visual Components Premium, but you may be using Essentials or some other product. And that's the folder where I'll build the library. Let's go to debug because we want to test with the software. So I'm going to select start external program. And I'll now find the executable for my 3D product in the program files. And the executable file should be called visualcomponents.engine.exe. So this executable here. Click open. And now let's start debugging. So when I click start, the software will load up. And we would expect our plugin, when it's uh, executed, that it will call our action and print hello world in the output panel. So let's start and see what happens. And so the software is loaded up and we can see here in the output panel, there's our message. So we know that our command has been registered and it can be called now. So what I'm going to show you now is how to call that net command, that action, using a Python script. So I'll go to my eCatalog panel and just load any component you want into the 3D world. So I'll just load this zero component, zoom in on it, how's it going? Now, if you have access to the modeling tab, you can continue further, else you're going to have to write your own Python command. But since I have access to the modeling tab, I'll go here. And now I'm going to create a Python script in this component I have selected. So in the behaviors group, click behaviors arrow, and then add a Python script. And now in order to call um, your registered commands in .NET API, you need to use a command called net command. And I'm going to show you how to get a handle for that now. So we don't need this snippet here. so. 
remove that. But you will need VC script to be imported so you can get the application object. So write app equals get application. And this is a method from VC script, so it's getting me a handle for the application right now. And once I have that, I'm going to find a command. So app.find command. And the command you need to find is called net command. So it's lowercase n followed by the camel case upper of C, so net command. And now when I execute this command, what do I want it to do? Well, it's very simple. I want it to call the command we just created, our action. So I'm going to say command dot execute. And for the parentheses, I have to give the ID of the command I want to call, or the command name. So in this case, it was hello command. And we didn't have any arguments. So now if I compile the code, we can see in the output panel that there it does. It printed our message used by calling that action we created called hello command. Now before I end the video, I'm going to show you how to call your .NET command using a component property. In this case, a button. So I have the component selected. I'll now go to the properties group, click the properties arrow, and I'm going to add a button. And let's go ahead and call this, or rename this button to be call my net command. And we can see here's the button. And now let's go back to our script. And we actually don't need this section right here, so let's get rid of this code and start fresh. So we're first going to get a handle for the component. So conf equals get component. And this method is coming from VC script. Now we need to get a handle for the property we want to have an event handler for. So we're going to say button equals comp.getProperty. And we need to get the reference to that property by name, which in this case we renamed it to be call my net command. And let's make sure we have a handle for the button. So I'll just print button.name and compile the code. And we can see it listed here in the output panel. So now that we have a handle for the button, let's go ahead and define a function that is called every time we click this button, every time its value changes. So let's say define my function. You could give this a different name if you want to. And this takes one argument for a property value change. I use a colon, and it's sometimes difficult working at different programming languages at the same time. So forgive me if I make mistakes. But we're first going to get a handle for the application. So app equals get application. And we're basically doing the same thing we did earlier, so I'll get a handle for that net command. So app.find command. This is a Python command used for calling uh, commands defined in .NET API. And then when that command's executed, so command.execute, what command do we want to call? We know that the ID of our command we defined earlier is called hello command. It doesn't have any arguments, so if it did have more arguments, you know, we would of course pass those to it, but we don't have any. And now what we expect is we have to tie this function to the properties uh, on change event. So the property was button, and the event is called on changed equals my function. So let's compile the code. And now let's go ahead and exit out of this. And let's now go back to the home tab. And I have the component selected here. And in the component properties panel, there's our button. And pay attention to the output panel. When I click the button, you can see, yep, it's now printing that hello world from my command every time I click the button. Great. Now this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, you can visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And the project and plugin we created in this video tutorial, you'll find a link to in the video description. So as always, have a wonderful day.